Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Breakfast with You. Super happy to be here with you today. I have with me Hilary Swingo. We're going to talk about her solo show right now, uh, which we have at the Contemporary Gallery as an RC exclusive. It's called Fight or Flight. Well, hi, Hilary. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for being here today, for joining me. Uh, we're going to have a great chat uh, here. Not exactly breakfast time, but I still have my latte here with me. <laughs> so that always works. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the exhibition that we have going on right now as an RC exclusive at Territory Contemporary Gallery, which I'm super happy because you have the, some of the works uh, right behind you as well. And I'm going to show more of them here as we have the conversations. Our friends can also check it out. Well, we're happy to have you here because we, ha we have a conversation about the exhibition called Fight or Flight that we have currently at Territory Contemporary. And I'm looking forward to this because I've been following your work, of course, for a while uh, as we had it in the exhibition. One of, uh, I'll tell you later which one is my favorite piece in the show, one that I had already uh, been looking at it for a while, even before the show. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited to have this conversation with you. But before that, again, we continue uh, talking about this. So tell me a, a little bit, uh, how would you describe the work that you do? Uh, well, I'm a representative painter or mm -hmm. figure realist. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I shy away a little bit from the term hyper-realism, although okay. I, I do definitely go for mm -hmm. very real. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want to lose like that magical quality that you get when you're looking up at a, a work up close. I love mm. sort of, like juicy brush strokes and yeah, you know, that's kind of where the magic happens. I like it to look really real from about 10 feet away and then okay. up, it's a little bit more abstract. Very cool. Yeah. So, so when you get up close, you can really almost like taste the paint, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can feel that brush stroke as it's been applied. And, uh, you know, that's always something that I enjoy as well. So let's talk about this idea of the exhibition called Fight or Flight. So tell me a little bit about the title. How do you come up with the title? And is this part of a series that you have been working on uh, or uh, something new? Yeah. Um, so the... The title uh, I came up with just kind of examining anxiety as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the pandemic, I had never had such a difficult time managing my anxiety before. Mm -hmm. And had even experienced panic attacks, which I've never had before. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's what a panic attack is. It's that fight or flight response in your body. It like short circuits your brain. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you think you're running from a bear, you know, yeah. it doesn't logically make sense, but it feels very real. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what the title came from. That's where it comes from. Yeah. No. And I had experienced that before as well. I remember the kind of like the first time I experienced a panic attack, which I didn't know what that was, you know, I was driving and all of a sudden I started like sweating, had like this anxiety and feel like I didn't know what, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't even name what I had, right? What was going on, I had to stop um, and uh, make some phone calls because I just, I just couldn't keep going. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a whole situation where, uh, you know, you kind of lose that control almost of yourself uh, in that, in that moment. Yeah. So, so tell me about then, uh, as you select that as the, as the topic, so tell me about the, the pieces that are in the show, how they relate to this idea. I, I grew up in a mm -hmm. home that we didn't celebrate birthdays or holidays. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bit of a journey, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Well, I love stories. So <laughs> and our friends love stories too, so we're good. <laughs> so, um, you know, I really started thinking about my early experiences being uh, socialized when you're young. And, mm -hmm. you know, in, I went to a public school in a very conservative community, very family traditions, mm -hmm. uh, forward community. And so it wasn't uncommon for like a mother of one of my classmates to bring in cupcakes for everybody to sing happy birthday to their child. Um, and the expectation for me was that I would remove myself from those situations. 
Mm-hmm. So I would go out into the hallway with a book or mm. draw, mm-hmm. um, get a library pass. So I, I was always really uncomfortable in those situations. Yeah. And exploring that um, in adulthood, I, I think some of that stems from those early socialization experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think we carry with us, right, all our uh, youthful experiences, positive and negative. They, you know, sometimes they kind of uh, show up in the in the things that we experience today as adults too. And so, uh, in in that uh, in that idea, as you approach the pieces that you have in the show, uh, tell me a little bit about them. So, most of the pieces if we kind of describe that there's usually one figure at least i haven't seen any with multiple figures usually one person as we can see some of the really nice ones in the back Uh, a lot of times just focus on the face or part of the face or you know you have one where uh, the figure is leaning on a couch but uh, it's almost like zooming in into the personhood but then um, something that kind of strikes us at first as we look at your work is the the balls right which typically is the way you put on a gif right a um, something that you give to somebody and uh, tell me a little bit about that which again the ball is kind of really strictly connected to this idea of giving birthday parties events and things like that christmas time you know like the it's like the icing on the cake on the gift right you gotta put the ball on top of it so that it, it completes the the gift itself so the figures here kind of have will have them in different uh, sizes in different positions. So tell me about, you know, where you came up with this idea uh, as, a, as a symbol uh, that creates a narrative for the world that you're doing. So I wanted to use like this super ubiquitous item that, mm-hmm. like you said, it's associated with joy and happiness and celebration and um, easily recognizable ac- across all s- spectrums of society. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to juxtapose juxtapose that item against these really solitary isolated figures and Mm. create kind of a visual tension Mm. that um you know kind of jars the viewer into realizing oh maybe all of our experiences aren't the same (laughs) (laughs) yeah pretty cool now how did you come up with that uh, symbol that's an idea is that something you like something that you imagine you had one like laying around in your studio and like oh wait a minute or you know uh, I'm really interested how ideas come up for for us as artists in the studio well I started these paintings kind of around when the pandemic was getting started and I okay. uh, was <laughs> I wasn't leaving the house I wasn't shopping for anything frivolous and mm-hmm. so, um, I did I had a package of gift bows in my closet and I was like, you know, what, what about this idea? And I just took some reference photos, I stuck them all over my face and took some reference photos and I was like, oh, this might work. This this is pretty cool. So yeah, it was sort of serendipitous. Yes, exactly. One of the favorite pieces uh, uh, that I have uh, of your work and particularly in this particular show is one that's called Blush. Uh, Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's one of the early ones, uh, but uh, it seems to me also to have a sort of a self-portrait right on the on the work, um, and you know the figure is kind of like looking down. It's not really engaging the viewer, but it's kind of looking away from the viewer, and uh, you know the ball is almost like if it's almost like if it's a virus in itself, you know, like something sticking out uh, in the face. She's not happy. She's not sad. It's like in a neutral, uh, almost like position uh and, and even the, the the facial expression so tell me about that piece is that one of the early ones it is yeah oh, okay okay and i don't know if you can tell but i'm blushing now because <laughs> i just that's like my neutral state when i'm talking <laughs> to people but um uh-huh. i just wanted to paint you know how uncomfortable that can be you know yeah there's nothing I can do about it. It's a betrayal of my body to yeah. make me bright red and I can't help it. So, um, yeah, I wanted to use the bows as uh, totally that physiological response of blushing and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sweeping up her neck and into her cheeks and like her hair is bright pink and it's, mm-hmm. you know, there is no turning away from her. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> 
really doesn't want you to be focusing on her. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. And I love that you have it right behind you that we can see it as we're speaking. That's pretty nice. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Hillary, for sharing a little bit about, uh, you know, your um, work right now. And for all the friends who would like to check it out, we invite you to please go to www dot territory contemporary gallery dot com or you can go directly to rc.net which might be the easiest go to rc.net and when you get there you just search for territory contemporary and you will find there at the top of the rc page you will see shows and you will see hillary's exhibition there with the works that are available as well easy to buy there as well from rc.net no matter where you are in the world so we look forward to uh, continue to see your work hillary um very fascinating with the things that you're doing, the ideas that you are uh, also uh, working with uh, in your work. And, you know, we look forward to see where this all kind of continues to evolve. Now, where can our friends find you in social media, those who may want to connect with you directly? So uh, probably the best place is Instagram. It's mm -hmm. at Ginger B, B-E-E, -E, like a bumblebee. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Or my website is hillaryswingle.com. So yeah, that's easy enough. Awesome. And we're going to put it also right here under the video for our friends to check it out. So thank you for having us in your studio. Hope you have a great, awesome rest of your day. Enjoy. <laughs> and uh, good to see you, Hillary. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sergio. And to all our friends, before you go, don't forget, do us a big favor and click on the share button that you have under this video. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. <music>